Hello, beautiful vocalist. I'm T.L. Baker, performing artist, musical theater coach. And today we're going to learn about moi. I wanted to share my vocal journey because how I got here is unique to me, just like your path is unique to you. So if we haven't met, I'm T.L. Baker, and I started singing when I started talking. And around five years old, I recall this memory. I was sitting on my swing singing songs, you know, and I remember that moment when I thought, this is what I want to do with my life. This is it. Singing makes me feel like I'm flying. And I think I relate that to that moment when I was sitting on my swing, just my heart pours, <laughs> pours love when I, when I sing. That same year, my mother put me into a youth theater company in the Bay Area called Belasco Theater Company, which has produced so many incredible performers and teachers and Broadway stars. I performed three shows a year with this theater company and was in it from age six to 18. And I learned how to sing, how to dance, how to perform, how to tap. I mean, all the different styles because musical theater is so incredible with in the genre of musical theater, there are tens of subgenres. You know, Big River is country bluegrass. You have All Shook Up with this 50s music. And you have, you know, classic musical theater, Oklahoma, which you can do a dream ballet and, and dance, partner dance and learn ballet. So I was trained by the San Francisco opera ballet master, Lawrence Peck. But at the time, I didn't know I was being trained by a world famous dancer. Um, he would come in and he would teach us choreography and it was really incredible. So I'm so blessed. Thank you, Lawrence Peck. And thank you, Eddie Belasco, for teaching me Meisner technique and how to connect with my body like we would do these acting exercises where we would stand there and he would talk to us and we'd be in front of the audience uh, or the you know the class and he'd be like how do you feel and you'd say good how do you feel nervous how do you feel a little annoyed that you keep asking me how I feel at the time I didn't know but now I realize like I am a more aware person because of these exercises I want to tell you the story about when I was singing my first solo. I was six years old. We were doing a showcase and I was singing Where is Love? And the number before mine, there were a bunch of kids on stage probably singing like Annie or Hard Knock Life. Okay. Tens of, there's probably like 30 kids on stage. And then the curtains close and I'm supposed to go through the curtain and sing in front of the curtain for my solo, Where's Love, while they change the scenery behind me. And there was all these kids. And I remember I'm on the side of the stage in the wings trying to get through all these kids. And I'm like, I, I don't, I don't want to be late for my number. And I'm like trying to get through everybody. And I start crying because I'm freaked out that I'm going to miss my first solo performance. And like, I got to get there. And so when I get there, I, you know, they peel the curtain and I go through and I'm like teary eyed. And my aunt was in the audience that day and she thought I was crying because it was part of my acting, but it was true because I was freaked out. I wasn't going to be able to sing my solo. I was going to miss my number and get in trouble. And I have this picture of me, which I'll put up right now, singing, where is love? Does it fall from skies above? When I was eight years old, I started training my voice and I started working with Lucia Scardino and I worked with her for 18 years. She taught me bel canto, which is an operatic style and I would sing in Italian. And so I was doing my musical theater stuff and like Annie, Music Man, Oklahoma, Guys and Dolls, Damn Yankees, South Pacific, all of these incredible musicals. And I was a natural belter. So um, that same year in 1988, I 
played my first leading role. And I played Applegate in Damn Yankees. And it was so fun to play a character role. And I'm like, wow, I like being funny. And I was this tiny little kid and I remember practicing my lines. It was a big deal for me. And I put a lot of energy into that performance. And I'm so, it was really great as a young person to learn all these lines and the show depended on me. So to carry a show at the age of eight, <laughs> it's pretty amazing. Then I went into junior high and I kept performing and then I went to high school and I sang in choir, which is a totally different thing than singing in solo a solo work right you want to conform your voice and blend your voice and like learn harmonies and my choir went to New York and we got to sing in Carnegie Hall so that was pretty incredible as a young singer to be standing on the Carnegie stage singing so that was a highlight of my high school career so I continued to sing and dance in Belasco Theater Company. I also performed in a little stage troupe called Dynamite, Dynamite, and we would perform different themed shows. We performed at Disneyland. We um, did some Christmas shows and some concerts, and I got to perform with Alicia Umfress, who starred in On the Town in the revival in... 2016, I got to see her on stage. And we worked together in the Bay Area performing. And so it's so cool to grow up and then 20 years later, see my colleagues performing on stage in musicals on Broadway. So cool. In 1998, I graduated high school. I was 17 years old. I had been training and helping assist the choreographer and the director of Belasco Theater Company. And so I wanted to start my own vocal studio. I loved teaching and I loved working with kids. I was a kid myself, I was 17 and started T.L. Baker's vocal studio. And then I went off to college at University of Pacific in Stockton at the Conservatory of Music and learned how to really capitalize on my voice. So I wanted to study opera because it's like the pinnacle of the voice. How far can you take your voice? Well, opera is the answer. They sing without microphones and in these like gigantic the like stages. So I wanted to do that. And I got to go sing in Germany and perform in Dido and Aeneas in the Museum Zinzelfest in Berlin. Such an incredible experience. It was funny, we were rehearsing in some bar during the day. I was like 19 and, and <laughs> smelled like alcohol. It was terrible, um, but it was the only rehearsal space that we had. And, and then that afternoon we would, we performed our show and I played Belinda. And so it's Handel, it's Handel music, so it's Baroque. And so there's all these, <laughs> all of these, it's called the Psy motif, and these like crazy runs, which are kind of like riffs of modern day. And so that was incredible. James Hafner and David Brock were incredible teachers at that time for me and really pushed me to be the best singer that I could be. Oh, that's right. The Kennedy Center American College Theater Fest. Every college submits a scene or a play or a show to this Kennedy Center American College Theater Fest. And when I was in UOP, we were doing La Cenerentola, which is the opera version of Cinderella. And I was one of the courtiers, so I didn't have a big part, but I was still in the show and it was really fun. And we submitted for the fest festival and we kept moving up and moving up and we won. And it turned out we were the first opera ever to win the American College Theater Festival. We got to go to the Kennedy Center and perform on stage in the Kennedy Center. And it was so incredible. So we won the American College Theater Festival and it was an opera, the first opera ever. Pretty cool. 
So then I graduated and I was auditioning for operas. I played Neda in Il Pagliacci in San Francisco at the Legion of Honor. Such an incredible experience. But then I realized, I was like, I miss musical theater. I miss performing character roles. So I retrained my voice. A big deal. I was singing opera and decided I got to get back into musical theater. That's where my heart is. I just wasn't happy in opera land. <laughs> and so I started working on bringing my voice into the contemporary musical theater placement, kind of like Kristen Chenoweth. That's exactly like similar to her story. She studied opera and then retrained her voice for musical theater. And then I started getting roles again. And I had the honor of performing on stage with Christiane Knoll and Francis Jew and James Monroe Iglehart and some incredible performers, Thursday Farrar in Into the Woods. I got to perform in Into the Woods. I played Rapunzel at Theater Works in Palo Alto, an incredible experience. And then I got to perform Hope Cladwell in you're in town which is such a fun show i learned so much doing that show oh i got my equity card at that time when i was working with theater works and um, san jose stage then i had two children i got married and had two kids and that was my new production and while i was raising two children i decided i want to start my own theater company so I did. It was called Music Box Theater Company, and it was a 501c3 nonprofit. We did one summer program, a big full-scale musical for, let's see, I think we did five, five years. It was so incredible. I learned so much. So I directed, I produced, I choreographed, I set designed, I did I say I costumed, I hired, I stage managed, I even ran the lights. So I stage managed um, and I put the band together. It was a really incredible experience. I learned so much and I also drove myself crazy because one person cannot do it all. So learning how to delegate was a big life lesson for me through Music Box. Then I decided I want to go back to performing and I put music box, you know, theater company just on a little hiatus and started auditioning again. And it was really challenging to get a contract as an equity performer and as a female, because all the contracts would be given to the men. So I decided, you know what, I just want to work. I don't need to be equity. So I decided I'll drop my card and start fresh and keep performing just for the love of performing. And then I had some incredible roles. Um, I'm gonna share my resume. Uh, there's not enough room to put everything on there, but you know, um, you wanna keep it all on one page. So I've put my highlights on there. I started cabaret singing. So what is that? Cabaret singing is when you are yourself you're presenting songs as yourself not as a character in a concert style setting so and then you have like little patter that you say like you talk and you introduce a song or you tell a little story this freaked me out I was like oh my gosh I have to be myself that's like the hardest thing ever right as a musical theater performer like you're used to putting on a personality and like this is my character but no now I have to be myself and I'm like ah I have to be myself. But I learned a lot. For every musical theater performer, I highly recommend cabaret singing so you can learn about who you are as a performer, not hiding behind a character. And so I did a bunch of great shows. I even wrote some shows. Um, we did an Easter Parade in concert. Um, we did a World of Weber cabaret show. It was very successful. I wrote my own show about Candor and Ebb. That was pretty incredible. And then um, Broadway's Biggest Hits. That was another really successful show that I wrote and performed. That was my one woman show. In 2018, 
I performed the role of Velma Kelly in Chicago. And this was a dream. Candor and Ebb are incredible writers. The dialogue in the show is so casual and it's like so relatable. And I won four awards for this show, uh, my portrayal of Velma Kelly. So that was quite an honor to be acknowledged for my work because I put my heart and soul and le left my blood, sweat, and tears on that stage. Um, incredible choreography. There is a video on YouTube, which I'll link to here, of me in the opening number. There's some really cool uh, lifts and acrobatic stuff in this clip. And meanwhile, I've been teaching my vocal studio all the while, and next year, it'll be my 25th anniversary. And my students, it's so incredible to think about the thousands of kids that I've worked with, because I, I work with young performers. And they've gone on to perform in Broadway national tours. I had a student in Finding Neverland, the full three years that they toured. And right now, one of my students that I've been working with for about five years, she's in the cast of Anastasia, playing young Anastasia in the Broadway national tour. It's pretty incredible knowing that I have been a part of these young performers' lives and in their journey and to help them spread their wings so that they can fly just like I did when I was six years old singing on my swing. You know, the people and the mentors that we work with really help us find ourselves and everyone's path is different and unique so now here i am it's 2022 right now and i am getting ready to perform a new cabaret show and i have a vocal program vocal audition mastery that is an incredible just amalgamation of everything that you need to know about performing and auditioning in musical theater and putting together a hundred years of musical theater into a five song selection audition package and creating an audition reel. And it's got vocal technique, audition technique, and care like building a character, building a resume, and finding a song, presenting a song audition know-how, like what do I put in my bag? How do I do a self-tape? All of these really cool things. So I learned a lot putting that together and pulling from my 35 years of performing on stage. Who knows what will come next? So thank you for sharing in my journey. And YouTube is part of my new journey and making these videos. So let me know if you have any like parallels with my journey and if you have any questions for me or any ideas on videos that you'd like to see on my channel. If you want a vocal warm up, check out some of my vocal warm ups here and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. I'm TL Baker. Have a good one.